Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our demonstration of Wilcom E4 Decorating. The decorating software is a new standard for anyone expanding into embroidery or that may be new to digitizing. It's going to provide simple graphics digitizing approach, allowing you full control of lettering and stitch settings, and it will include over 200 Wilcom embroidery fonts. These Wilcom fonts have been professionally digitized for high quality embroidery. New to E4 is in the inclusion of 3D fonts. These fonts are digitized and ready to use with foam. I'd like to point out um, some changes to the workspace. We have restructured it a bit, making it more efficient to the end user. E4 will also support 4K monitors. It's going to allow you to um, to display large icons. I'm going to go ahead and do that, although I'm not too sure how well you will see that on my screen because I'm not working on a 4K monitor. And also, as you're learning software, sometimes icons, you're not really sure um, what the icon is. You can hover over an icon to let you know what its functionality is, in this case, select object, digitize open shape. But in E4, we've introduced labels, so we can turn on the labels for each of the icons displaying the time. So this is going to make, make the transition over to E4 much easier if you're coming from a previous version. Um, if you're new to Wilcom, these tool, these tool names are going to make it e easier to learn the software, or if you're possibly training a new employee. Now, for today's demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn those off. We've also introduced design tabs. So any design that you have open is going to be tabbed up above the working area, making it very easy to go back and forth. This particular design doesn't have anything between designs. So that is a new feature to the E4. Volage also introduced things with a toolbar. It's where all your stitches are. So you're going to have outline stitches and you're going to have fill stitches. This is going to make it a lot easier when you're actually digitizing designs. I'm going to go ahead and open up a new window and I'm going to turn on my auto fabric assistant and if you see there's a quite a variety of fabrics you can select the fabric you don't have to turn this on you can enter your own underlay um, based on your preferences or if you're not too sure of the underlay maybe you're new to embroidery you're not sure um, what kind of underlay is best suited for fleece material you can turn this on and and when you convert something or actually digitize it, the well, software is going to put in the proper underlay, density, pull compensation, etc. for your design. E4, um, when you purchase the E4 software, you're also going to get the CorelDRAW 8 suite. E4 is um, integrated and connected to Corel 8. You can go back and forth between Corel and will come by click of a button, but you can also run Corel as a standalone program. Corel gives you a lot of capabilities. It is a full version of Corel. It's going to give you the capability to actually draw out designs if you're a graphic designer. It's also going to allow you to bring in a variety of file formats. So Corel supports quite a bit of file formats. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my spring. This is a JPEG that was emailed to me. I'm going to place it on the screen. Again, we're in Corel. You know, I can make this a little bit bigger. Um, I could rotate it. You know, there's a lot of things that you can do in Corel. Again, an end entire program um, for you to work with with your graphic files. 
since Corel is included and fully integrated, it's going to provide, like I said, full vector bitback graphics software. And this is making Wilcom Decorating a true multi-decoration software program. So you're going to be able to print, cut, engrave, embroider, and a lot more. So I am in this particular case, I'm just going to crop out as much of the word spring as I can. So I'm going to go this way. And just make this smaller. And so I've cropped this out because all I want in this particular design is just really the tulip. I'm going to go ahead and just convert it to show you how quickly you can convert this JPEG over to embroidery. I'm going to go ahead and hide the graphic. And I'm going to bring up my color object list because I want to delete part of the word spring. And here I have my design. Now going back to the user interface, these dockers that I'm pulling up, I can move them wherever I want. So if you've got multi, if you've got more than one monitor, you could set this up. You could set up the the workspace however you you want. I can take all my dockers and move them over to my second screen. I can actually take all my tools and move them over to my sec secondary screen, leaving just a large workspace. I'm just going to go ahead and close this out. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so that you can see it on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and take this through our stitch player, which was the slow redraw. This, is, this has changed a little bit. It's using more of the classic media player controls. It's also going to allow me to move through a color or quickly go to the next color. As we click, I can also increase the speed. I am going to go ahead and just zoom in on the tulip. And then I'm going to start the redraw again. And if you notice, notice how my screen is scrolling through based on where my current needle location is. If I needed to pause, I could click the pause button. Maybe I need to take a look and see what exactly is going on with my underlay. And then quickly restart it. So the stitch player, or what used to be called slow redraw, has been drastically improved. I'm just going to make this, this is my one-to-one. -one. Move it up just a little bit. As I mentioned earlier, we have 200 embroidery fonts loaded with the decorating software. Uh, so there's about 25 new fonts that we have loaded for you. We're also introducing the 3D fonts. These have been digitized um, to be used with foam. And we're going to talk about those in just a couple minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in some text. And I'm going to move it just a little bit closer to my, to my tulip. And I'm going to come over here now. If I wanted to see what the text looked like in the particular font that's selected, I can click on the preview. And I can quickly select a different, a different font. Also down below, we've introduced um, font families. So you can sort out your true type fonts if you're one of those people that has thousands of true types on your system. You can sort those out by style. So maybe I want to look at all my true types that are serifs. And then up at the top, when I get down to the bottom, all my serif fonts are going to be listed and not all 1,000 plus fonts. I can also choose to just look at true type fonts. 
So notice it's just listing out my true types. Again, we've really tried to change, um, we've tried to really improve on the efficiency in E4, but still giving you the ability to be quite creative with your designs and create commercial embroidery designs. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring back just my embroidery. And I'm gonna go back to Adele. You still have the capability of reshaping your fonts. And remember, I'm just reshaping this letter, not the entire font. So the capability of moving, of fixing the kerning. So all those things that were available previously are still there for you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and undo those changes. And I'm going to make the springtime a different color. And I want my tulip to be magenta. One, um, one additional feature, or another new feature of the four line is the introduction of my threads. Let me just close out this docker and bring up my threads. So my threads, what it does is it actually, it, when it installs, when your E4 installs, it installs the Madeira Classic 40 as your thread. However, if you look to the left of this dialog box, we have, um, there is a variety of different thread charts. So if the Madeira is not the one that you use, you can't select your thread chart and move it over. So what does, what does my threads do for you? Right now, if you look at the bottom of my screen in my color palette, you're going to notice that it's just using my default colors. So this is default green, blue, and my magenta. Any of these colors down below that have the blue square in the upper right-hand corner, well, those are the colors being used in this design. By clicking on Match All, it's going to match up those colors, my default colors, to the closest code within my chart. So it's a lot easier than having to scroll through all the color codes and picking out the right code or color. So now if I look and hover over my color, the green is the Madeira Classic, the blue is this 1076, and the same thing um, with the magenta. I can also hide any unused, color, unused colors so that this palette isn't strung all the way at the end with a bunch of unused colors. So that's my threads. Again, very, very efficient. Quickly assign your color codes by a click of a button. Going back to lettering, I'm going to go back into the properties. If I scroll down a little bit, we've brought for, we put lettering art right into my lettering properties or into our lettering properties. So very quickly, I can assign different envelopes or artistic artistic looks to my text right from my lettering properties. In our previous versions, you had to select the text, go in, select enveloping, select the type of enveloping. Again, E4 makes everything much more efficient for you. Everything is brought forth right where it should be. Um, going back to these, there are 22 lettering styles or lettering arts that I can apply to my text. I guess it helps if I have my text selected to make the change. So let's go up to one that's just a little bit more traditional. I'll go ahead and select this one. I can also then go into the reshape. It allows me to reshape it, so if I need a little bit more, a more of a drastic look, I can go ahead and change those. So again, everything is um, more efficient readily accessible. We've brought it all to the forefront. Our product visualizer, he has been improved. 
we are introducing many, many more products into the product visualizer. They're also organized by different categories and they are all high resolution. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my my woman's pillows and I'm going to go ahead and select this one here and I'm going to change its color. Let me go ahead and try another one. Let's do this one here. I had to turn on my product. I apologize for that. Let's go ahead and change the color here. And let me fit it to the screen. I need to apply the color. There we go. So notice that our product visualizer drastically improved, um, improved high resolution images. so that you can quickly show your customer their design on the product that they've chosen. Uh, we can go ahead and let's go into accessories. So they've added bibs, backpacks, blanket, computer cases, gloves. There's a lot of things here to choose from. Let's go ahead and choose the handbag. I'm just going to bring the design here. So the product visualizer drastically improved. Uh, in design properties, we've introduced an order, a job order form. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and save my design. And I am going to move it over into my public folder. And I'm going to call this hand spring because they're going back to my design properties and the order we've introduced a simple job order form it's going to allow you to um, create an order right here maybe your customer is sitting with you give it a title it's going to be handbag you can also assign the design status You can also assign it on the order number or quote number. We can enter the, the customer name. Is there um, a contact? I'm just going to put myself as the contact. The reference I'm going to use as a field for phone number. Because these are all going to become searchable in our integrated design library. So we're going to place the customer wants a handbag. Um, position is the center front. How many do they want? They want five of these. Um, maybe here in product it would be, you know, the manufacturer of your handbag or wherever you're purchasing it. It's going to be maroon and they want five. Again, you can enter some notes as well. So this is all customizable to you. So in the reference, so even though it says product type, you can enter something different in here. It's totally up to you how you use these forms. Within summary, I'm going to go ahead and tag this, this design. So these tags are also going to become searchable within the design, the integrated design library. Now the beauty of the design properties and the job order form is it is all saved in the EMB file. So if you were to send me one of your EMB files and I open it up on my system, I'm going to see all the information within that order form. Right from design properties, I can print an approval sheet. I'm going to go ahead and click print approval sheet so you can see what we have done to the approval sheets and how we have um, really enhanced them. So down at the bottom 
it's going to give all the information from that order form. Your quote number, your order number is up there. If you put in an order date, that's going to display. I'm going to go to the next page. And then here's an approval sheet that you could send to your customer, showing their design right on the back that they selected. You can actually send this to them. They're going to be able to approve it and date it. And you can send a PDF file of this approval sheet through your email directly from the Embroidery Studio software. Or I could create the PDF, save it to my hard drive, and um, then attach it to an email. So that's something new in the E4 line. You can make PDFs of your print sheets um, directly from within the software, and you don't need, there's no longer a need for that third-party software. So I'm going to go ahead and just close this out. Um, a couple other things that have been in introduced is Open Recent is going to show you a thumbprint of the design. If you go to Open, do I have any DST files? And we'll come back to this. And then we have an integrated design library. So the integrated design library is replacing Design Explorer. This is going to be a very quick way to define designs within a folder. Now the cool thing about the Design Manager, or the Design Library, I apologize, is that when you search something out, it's going to search that folder and all other subfolders. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to search out designs that are tagged with the name dog. So any design either with the name with dog in the file name or possibly tagged is going to display for me. Let's try tree. Sorry, you having a problem typing today. So I've typed in tree, it's going to start searching for all those designs in embroidery that are tagged tree. Now if I right click on something, so I'm going to go ahead and select on this design and go into properties. It's going to show me information on this particular design. I'm going to go into details. It's going to give me the stitches, the height, the width, all sorts of different details on the design. Now I'm going to search out designs by customer phone number. Now remember, I had set up my reference to be my customer number, so that's what I'm using for my customer phone number field is my reference within my shop. So I'm going to go in and type in reference. Equal. And then I'm going to type in my customer phone number. And it's going to start searching. for any design with that particular phone number in the order form. I'm not sure if I saved that design, so I apologize. So let's just delete that out. Let's just take a look at this one here, because this is one that I did in Atlantic City. I'm going to go into Properties, again, Details, 
And here's all the information on this particular design. Now right from here, I can go ahead and open the design and it's going to open it in Embroidery Studio. So again, notice the tabs of multiple tabs across the top. We've also done a lot to the monogramming tool. So if you notice, the monogramming comes up as a docker. And we have a variety of monogram designs. We have those with borders and ornaments. So again, these are a little bit fancier. There's ornaments within the monogram um, borders. Uh, the next one is just borders. We can also create custom, and we're going to come back to this in just a couple minutes. And then um, simple monograms, which would be just your three-letter monograms. We've added styles. So if I scroll down, there are 23 styles that you can use for monograms. Now with the monogramming, it's the letters can be generated with any font on your system. So those can be those 200 will come embroidery fonts or they can be any of your two type fonts. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this. Notice as soon as I click on it, it's interactive or it's on the screen immediately. I think what I'm going to do is quickly open up a new window. And there we go. And then I'm going to go into letters and I'm going to change out to my monogram. Well, I wanted to change out the, hold on one second. This should be selected. So now with it selected, I can go ahead and change these out. I was creating a new monogram previously. Sorry about that. I want them to be capital. And the cool thing with our monogramming tool is that if I need to kern, this P needs to be moved over a little bit. It used to be we had to break this apart. Now it's very easy to just click on that letter and move it around. And here you have a monogram. So if I don't like this look, I could put multiple ones on a screen. Maybe um, the customer is just not too sure what they want in their monogram. Go ahead and... Put this one on the screen. I'm going to move it over a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and change out the letters. Again, I need to be selected in order to change out the letters in the monogram. So again, I go into reshape. Maybe I need to move this up just a little bit, bring this one down. So again, you don't have to break this apart to edit the letters. You can do it right there within monogramming. So I can quickly set up jobs. It helps if I get out of reshaping. I'll move this over and then I could print this out and send it to my customers so that they could choose their monogram that they prefer. So a lot's been done to the monogramming. So you've got borders and ornaments, borders, and then just simple three letter monograms. I'm going to go over to a new window. And actually, I'm going to grab this anchor, and I'm going to add um, I'm going to show you how easy it is to create a monogram template. And we're going to go ahead and let's just select style number one. I'll bring it down just a little bit. Get a little bit smaller. 
Gotta do some kerning. Move my pee over just a bit. So there's the new monogram that I've created. So instead of saving this as a design, I can save it as a monogram template. Software's programmed to go right into my monogram designs to my custom. I'm going to call this my anchor mono. I'm going to open up another window and go back into monogramming. Whoops. And then go into my designs. And here's my anchor monogram. So these are all um, different monograms that I created just by adding a design and then the monogramming letters. And then those become edible or modifiable just like the borders and ornaments and the other monogram designs that we've loaded into the software. So I want to go back to my spring design. So as you see, we've done a lot to lettering. We've done a lot to monogramming. Uh, we've also, let me just remove the graphic. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. And I'm going to go back into lettering. I'm going to just remove the lettering art. Very quick to do. Just click remove art. And I'm also going to change my font to um, a 3D block. As I said earlier, we've introduced 3D fonts into the E4 line. I want to go ahead and zoom in on these so that you can see that these fonts are already kept at these open areas so that when you sew them off, your foam is not going to pop out. In addition to those kept areas, if I um, click on this and go into my fills, The proper, the proper density has already been programmed into the software. So I've got 200 fonts, embroidery fonts, professionally digitized by Wilcom for high quality embroidery that can be used to add text to your designs. They can be used within the monogramming program as well. I'm just going to go back to lettering very quickly. I'm just going to type something in. Just type in Wilcom E4. And let's use a 3D block 2. I'll put it on the screen. We'll make it a little bit bigger here. to see how the spacing is set at point 20. So very, very tight stitch for my 3D font. And then the tops are capped off. I want to make this just bigger because I want to show you how quick you can outline any font or any object in your design. So let me just make this about 0.75 inches. So any font that's just one color, by using the simple offsets, we can automatically outline. So I'm going to set this to zero. Um, you can outline them with a run stitch. And then quickly select them through the color object list. And make them a different color. So any one color font or any font, any object can quickly be outlined. So 
So again, full digitizing program, lettering, editing. Uh, I'm going to go back to the digitizing. So earlier in the demo, I showed you how to convert a graphic. And let me see how far. And I just undo a lot of the stuff that I did. And this time what I want to do is I want to show you. So we converted this JPEG over to embroidery. We imported it into Corel. Because remember, we're, we're integrated and connected to Corel. And we converted it over to embroidery. But I want, you to, I want to show you how easy it is to just digitize with E4. So with E4, in the decorating version, you have what we are calling graphical digitizing. So not only are you able to automatically convert your designs from Corel over to embroidery, but you can also digitize these. So you've got all these tools and the graphics digitizing available um, for you. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my close shape. I like to say if you can trace with the pencil, you're going to be able to digitize. Why? Because we're just tracing the shape using our mouse. I'm just going to, because I'm doing this manually, I'm going to overlap just a little bit. And I'm closing the shape and generating the stitches. Now, I don't like the way those stitches, because they're all going up and down, and they really should turn with the leaf. So I'm going to select it and very quickly add stitch angles to this design. I must have missed something, so I'm going to go ahead and reshape this. So there is, there is my leaf. And of course, you can clean things up, change the angle. I can change this to a curve point. Move this out a little bit, make this one curved. See how the shape is changing when I change these to curved nodes. I could also delete nodes if I have to. Now, what if I wanted to try something different to this closed shape? So I filled it in. Remember, any of these closed shapes, I can change it to a zigzag, um, blanket stitch, just showing you the different stitch types, or tatami or even a motif. But what if I wanted this to just be a running stitch? Even though I started with the close shape, I can go ahead and make this a running stitch by just a click of the button. Remember, this is all based off of a graphics program where your shapes are filled or they're outlined or they're both. So let's go back to this being filled and I'm going to go ahead and put in my angles. And I'm having, I didn't digitize it correctly from the beginning, so I apologize. And then I'm going to skew these over a little bit. So this particular shape, if I wanted it outlined, I could use my simple offsets or I could simply duplicate the object and then outline it. This is a little bit too big, so I'm going to go back to your running stitch and get it a different color. So it's very, very easy to digitize with E4 decorating. So we have the closed shapes. We also have open shapes. So the stem of... This tulip I'm going to create with the running stitch, which is an open shape, and it's filtered in with the running stitch. Now this running stitch could be a satin stitch very quickly, a zigzag, or a tatami. Or the, that's the blanket stitch, sorry, the tatami. So your outlines, again, are running stitches, sat, um, satin stitches, fill stitch, zigzag, or e-stitch. So it's, again, very, very easy to digitize. So 
shapes. The graphical digitizing allows you to just quickly trace a shape with the mouse. It's going to automatically, um, in this case, do the outline, or I can fill it in. So again, it's a lot easier to digitize with the graphics digitizing than with our um, tools of the input A, input B, um, which were a little bit more difficult to use. So going back to the shape, I showed you how you can quickly insert stitch angles. We can also put it in holes. So it's left a hole. I am going to go ahead and duplicate this particular object and move it over and I'll rotate it. So I've got these stitches. So right here I've got a lot of stitches. So many times this has happened to you where you digitize, um, you want to get rid of the stitches down below. Decorating and gives you a feature called Remove Overlaps, which when I click on it, it rebuilds that bottom shape and it removed anything underneath. Now notice that cutout is a little bit smaller than that top piece because it knows that it needs to build in that push compensation. Let me go back to design. Oops. So that same design, I am able with the decorating software, I'm able to bring in the JPEG into Corel, convert it over to embroidery, or I can manually digitize it. I'm going to deselect everything and delete it. You could also create um, you could also do applic um, you can add holes to the shapes and we can also create appliques. I'm just going to just make a quick circle on the screen. And here's your applique. So if I took it through the redraw, there is that guide stitch. And then it's automatically going to go out to the top, stop the machine so I can lay my fabric down. And notice how the screen is moving with that current needle penetration. That's a very, very cool feature of E4. The tack down, and then of course your top stitching. Slow it down. And I mean, uh, and I'm at the end of the design. So with decorating, you have full digitizing. You can create appliques. You can automatically, you can convert from bitmap over to embroidery. You can manually digitize. But graphics digitizing is going to allow anybody to learn how to digitize. You're just creating a shape and then filling, filling it in. Decorating also allows you full editing of uh, DST files. And let me see if I can find a DST file. Let's bear with me one second. I'm really not sure where I've got my DST files, if I have any. Well, instead of, let's do this. Let me take my anchor, and I'm going to save this as a DST. which you're now 
exporting a machine file. So this is a little bit different from previous versions. I'm going to put it on my desktop. I'm going to select DST and just hit save. I'm going to close this. And then I, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to open that DST file. And I'm going to bring it in. Yes, it's going to, it doesn't hold the display colors. Remember your stitch files. It's just going to, every time it sees a function code, it's going to go in and assign it a new color. But if we take a look through the color object list, I can go in to this DST and I'm going to go ahead and hide everything else. This is my underlay. I can still reshape it. So I have full editing and decorator of my DST files. And I can also change the stitch type. So this is a great tool because if you um, if you have a lot of DST files, maybe you don't like the underlay that whomever digitized it put in for you, you can actually take the underlay out, take the underlay out of this particular design, and then I'm going to, it's easier if I just show you this piece others and then go in through our object properties let me get rid of that so I don't think I there we go and go into the underlay and set the underlay, the, the Wilcom underlay. So I could do a double tatami. I could do a single tatami, a double zigzag, and it's going to regenerate this stitch with this new underlay. So I'm going to go ahead and redraw it, and you're going to see it right there. So I took out the underlay that the, that the digitizer put in for me, and then rebuilt that shape or that element with the Wilcom underlay. I notice my my um, slow redraw, my stitch player, is only showing that one object that I have shown in my color object list. If I went back into my color object list and unhit everything and went into the redraw, it would redraw the entire design. So that concludes the, the E4 decorating demo. It is a full digitizing system, editing, lettering, monogramming, applique, fully integrated and connected to CorelDRAW 8. So it is a very, very good program for anybody getting into embroidery, anybody, um, anybody adding embroidery to their shops, or someone that just wants to start digitizing. So if you have any additional questions, uh, you can contact our sales department at 877-657-7500 or by email to sales at willcomeamerica.com. Again, thank you for watching this demonstration of E4 Decorating. Have a wonderful day.